Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is lesson two, estimating probabilities by collecting data. Classwork exercises one through eight is a carnival game. At the school carnival, there is a game in which students spin a large spinner. The spinner has four equal sections numbered one, two, three, four, as shown below. To play the game, a student spins the spinner twice and adds the two numbers that the spinner lands on. If the sum is greater than or equal to five, the student wins a prize. So if I spun a four and then a one, that adds up to five. That's a winner, chicken dinner. If I spin a two and then a four, that's a winner, chicken dinner. Four plus three is seven. Two plus three is five. Three plus four, or three plus four is seven. Four plus two is six. Three plus one is four, loser. Two plus one is three, loser. So the only way you can lose is if you spin a one in one of your spins. Two ones obviously is two and that's a loser too. All right. So spin two twos, that's four, that's also a loser. So if you spin a one, any one, just one time, you're not going to win unless you get a four. So 1, 3, 1, 2, or 1, 1 is a loss. 2, 1, 2, 2 is a loss. 2, 3 is a winner, and 2, 4 is a winner. 3, 2 is a winner, 3, 4 is a winner, 4, 3 is a winner, 4, 4 is a winner. Okay, got it? Good. Now let's play the game. This game, play this game with your partner 15 times. Record the outcome of each spin below. Okay, so since this was done in class, I suppose I will just make these up and I will use the key to do it. Um, okay, so say I spun, say the um, first spin was a four and the second spin resulted in a one. Those add up to five. Then I spin a one and then a three. That adds up to four. Then I spin a three and a two. Three plus two is five and we're going to keep going here and how about a one and another one totaling two and then maybe a two spin a two and then spin a one that totals three and then a one and a four a one plus four is five and so on and so on so i'm just going to pause the video fill this in and come back okay so there's my table filled out Next page, there's questions about this, so I'm going to copy this and bring it with me so I don't have to keep going back and forth. Okay, so here's the copy of my results. Now we're going to answer some questions about it. Out of the 15 turns, how many times was the sum greater than or equal to five? So I'll circle those. You did see me click on the green, yes. All right, five, 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 six, eight, seven, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Out of the 15 turns, how many times was sum greater than or equal to five? It is eight. What sum occurred the most often? Okay, so now I'm going to do a tally. So I'm going to, what, what, what can occur? Anywhere from two to eight. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now I will do a tally and let me get rid of these circles. Move those out of the way. And now we're going to say five, four, five, two, three. Five, four, five, two, three. Five, five, four, six, eight. Five, five, four, six, eight. Two seven seven four three. Two seven seven four three. What occurred the most often? Five had four, so the five occurred the most often. What sum occurred the least often? Well, six only occurred once, and eight only occurred once, so I'd say six and eight. 
Number four says, if students were to play a lot of games, what fraction of the games would they win? Explain your answer. Okay, well, winners are five, sums of five or more. Losers are sums of two, three, or four. So if we can get a sum of two, a sum of three, a sum of four, a sum of five, a sum of six, a sum of seven, and a sum of eight. Um, so if this was randomly occurring, we would expect that randomness to continue. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight winners out of our total 15 of trials. So we're, I would assume that if this can, trend continued that on a large scale, we would win eight out of 15 times, which is just a little bit more than half the time. Number five says to name a sum that would be impossible to get while playing the game. One, because if we're spinning twice, one plus one is the smallest we can get, which is two, and we can't get anything greater than four plus four, which is eight, so one or greater than nine. Okay, so getting a sum of one or nine or greater. Six says, what event is certain to occur while playing the game? What is certain to occur? Are we certain we're going to spin a one? Not necessarily, or a two, or not an individual. Are we certain that we're going to get a total less than nine? What event is certain to occur? How about a total less than nine? That is definitely certain to occur. There's others, of course, getting a total that's more than one. Spinning a number one through four at least one time. And, you know, there's all kinds of possible answers. Okay, so when you were spinning the spinner and recording the outcomes, you were performing a chance experiment. Chance experiment. You can use the results from a chance experiment to determine the probability of an event. In exercise one, you spun the spinner 15 times and counted how many times the sum was greater than or equal to 5. An estimate for the probability of a sum greater than or equal to 5 is P, the probability of the sum being greater than or equal to 5. So that's how we say that. The probability of a sum being greater than or equal to 5. And to find that out is the number of observed occurrences of the event divided by the total number of observations. Number seven, based on your experiment of playing the game, what is your estimate for the probability of getting a sum of five or more? Based on your experiment, what is your estimate for getting a sum of five or more? And so five or more would have been right here, eight out of 15. Number of observed occurrences of the event. How many times did we get five or more? Eight times. How many events did we how many observations did we do? 15. So number of observed occurrences is the number of times we got five or more, which was eight, and total number of observations is the number of times we spun the spinner, which was 15. Okay, eight fifteenths we could then turn into a percentage. That means eight divided by 15. So if I divide 15 by eight, then I get 0 0.15 times four is 60, 15 times five is 75. Fifteen times four is sixty. Fifteen times three is forty-five. And we're going to get a repeat. So that's approximately okay. Approximately fifty-three. Quit listening to me, Cortana. Okay, so based on your experiment of playing the game, what is your estimate for the probability of getting a sum of five or more? About 53%. Number eight, based on your experiment of playing the game, what is your estimate for the probability of getting a sum of exactly five? So now I go back, sum of exactly five happened four times. So I would say number of observed occurrences of that event was four. Total number of observations was 15. 
4 fifteenths is, hey Siri, what's 4 divided by 15? 4 divided by 15 is about 0 0.2666. So it's approximately 27% of the time. Example 2, animal crackers. In my soup, a student brought a very large jar of animal crackers to share with students in class. Rather than count and sort all of the different types of crackers, the student randomly chose 20 and found that the following counts for the different types of animal crackers. Estimate the probability of selecting a zebra. So here are all the animals. Here's the number of animal crackers of that shape. And we want to know how often a zebra occurred. Well, that was a probability of 3, and the total number of events was 20, 3 twentieths. Hey, Siri, what's 3 divided by 20? 3 divided by 20 is 0 0.15. Okay, no repeating non-terminating decimal, so that is an equal sign. 3 twentieths is 15%. That's the probability of get, drawing a zebra at random. Okay, if a student randomly selected a cracker from a large jar, what's the estimate for the probability of selecting a lion? Okay, let me copy that over. Okay, so here we go. What is your estimate for the probability of selecting a lion? 2 out of 20. 2 out of 20 reduces to 1 out of 10. Well, that's 10%. What is your estimate? for the probability of selecting a monkey. There are four monkeys, a total of 20. That's four out of 20. That reduces to one out of five, which is equal to 20%. Okay. What is your estimate for the probability of selecting a penguin or a camel? A penguin or a camel one or the other well there's a out possible outcome if I select a camel that's success if I select a penguin that's success there are four possible successes out of 20 which is the same as the question above the probability of getting a camel or a penguin is equivalent to getting a monkey okay what's your estimate for the probability of selecting a rabbit uh, there is no rabbit, so that is 0 out of 20, or 0%, not happening. Okay, is there the same number of each kind of animal cracker in the jar? No. Do I really need to explain that? Two lions, one camel, that two is not the same as one. Enough said. If the student randomly selected another 20 animal crackers, would the same results occur? Why or why not? No. The reason is because boxes are filled at random. This is not a representation of the total box. This is just a sample. 15. If there are 500 animal crackers in the jar, how many elephants are in the jar? Well, now we can do an estimate. we can use this outcome as a possible estimate of the total. So if we want to know how many elephants are in a jar of 500, if there were five elephants in a pack of 20, or in a, in a sample of 20, then I would assume that it would be approximately equivalent to the ratio of some number over 500. Okay. So, in order to get 20 to go into 500, I would say, hey Siri, what's 500 divided by 20? 500 divided by 20 is 25. So, I need to multiply 20 by 25 to get 500. So, if I multiply the top and the bottom by 25, 25 divided by 25 is 1. So, we're multiplying by a multiple of 1, basically. But 5 times 25 is 125. I could do it that way, or I can cross multiply, whatever way you're comfortable with. 20x equals 2,500, and then divide 20 both sides, and I get x equals 
and 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 5 twice with the remainder of 1, and 2 goes into 10 five times, and sure enough, we got the same answer. So I would assume there to be approximately 125 elephants in a jar of 500 crackers if there were five elephants out of a sample of 20. Okay, that is the end of lesson two. Review your lesson summary and go do your problem set.